Um, yeah, they don't, I don't really think that Google's cloning it. I mean, Google's not trying to sell anything. All they're doing is using this technology, and people are saying this is probably for Street View stuff, so I don't have a problem at all with Google doing this. No, I don't have they a don't problem with their doing it. I just find it funny that it's being presented like, oh, Google's made a car that can drive itself. I'm like, really? Germany made one that can pass the, fr- <laughs> the driver <laughs> point. Google never tried to advertise this as their own invention. Uh, other people, journalists, are trying to do that. Yeah, Google, it's, 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 so you're right. It isn't is, so much Google doing it. It's not, but that's like, I'm like, doing that. it's like, you know, it's nice to see journalists still don't do fact checking before they report a story. Right. It's so nice to see. It's like, uh, it's, it's a, uh, to be honest, I can see where they're coming from. It's way interesting to pick up a newspaper and see Google make self driving car because you see Google. And then you think it's totally, you know, it's really cool, and it's going to be awesome, and it's totally believable. When you see some company that you've never heard of make a self-driving car, you have a lot of, you know, uh, and, uh, I don't know. Google has a name. I but it's not Google's name. work. It's Google using yeah. other people's tech. That's... <laughs> ah... Uh. How do you how do you know that? How do you know that Google? Uh, how do you know that they didn't just get the idea from this and this is their own? Okay, maybe they recreated it, but I it's this is one of the things that annoys me when a company's been working hard for 10, 15 years and has developed a technology and yada yada, and then you know because the press wants to sell it, they they go oh well. Ignore company blah that's done all the groundwork. Google did it. That's like. <laughs> yeah. Well, the thing is that uh, the, the self-driving cars were before the Germany company and the Google thing. They've they've been around for a long time. People trying to make self-driving the the cars difference cars. about the German one that they sent through the German road test is that it was the first one that could do it reliably uh, with precision marks. Uh, and that one, it's like, uh, whether it was wet, dry, with all the variables, as long as it was road, it could do it. Uh, however, there's another company you should give chance to, and that's the one that won the DARPA challenge. Um, which I think is actually what the Google one's based on. I don't think it's actually the German company one. I think it's based on the DARPA one. Um, but I'd have to do a little more research there. It's like, and it's like, what's the point of these companies, you know, breaking their back to win these X prizes and then license the technology off? They're never going to get any credit. <laughs> it's like, it's <laughs> yeah. I was actually reading an article. Uh, it was called "What If Google Does It," and <laughs> it's talking about, you know, um, how how people, you know, they think about they they want to introduce this invention, and you know, people are asking. What if Google tries to do this too? Because they're going to take you out of the market if you if you do it. They're going to, you know. Uh, so I was reading a whole article about how people, you know, either they can get bought by Google or Google will probably beat them. Well, yeah, you can, you can be bought by Google or Google can beat you. Or if you're doing something that requires a human being to sit and reason that cannot be adequately done by a computer algorithm, Google probably can't compete with you very well because Google's solution to everything is the algorithm can do it. <laughs> it's like, well, I don't think that driving can't be done by a pure computer. Oh, oh, oh. I think that a computer will eventually be able to drive better than most humans. And they already can. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, that's, that's over-dramatizing how bad humans are at driving, but I think that most humans are pretty... Well, okay. I... <laughs> Okay, fine. fine. It's like, do you really want to defend humans? You've seen them on the road. It's like, <laughs> no, no. But it's like, what what I mean is, if you're do, if you're doing something and you're creating a new service today, unless an integral part of your service is a human, and and I don't mean like you have good customer service and so on. I mean it's something that requires actual analytical thinking that a computer is not capable of doing to make it function. 
if like a core part of what your product is requires that, then Google can't do it because it's not Google's business model to actually get a human involved. Google's business model is the removal of all human souls from all processes so that a computer algorithm can solve it. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, what, what are you saying that why would it have to require a human? It's like, well, it's like I, I'm trying to think of a good example because uh, it's like there aren't a lot of services that are like that, but uh, like I'll give you an example of a service that Google would not be able to do well. Picking pictures to match moods or themes. They can't do it. it that, that requires a human it, it, because that's something a human's good at. A computer can't really get that right because uh, it requires some aesthetic analytical thinking. Google's working on it, but they still can't get it right. Uh, it's, and it's one of those things I'm not sure they ever will until they develop some type of AI. Now, once we develop AI technology, forget it. Google can rule the world. We will all be under the Google AI. Google is Skynet. There you go. That's like... <laughs> one, one thing. Before AI, yes, they would have some problem, but, I mean, yeah, okay. It, it'd be interesting to see what happens after, you know, cars can drive better than people. They can recognize words better than people. You know, captions are going to be useless. What are we going to do to, to, to tell someone to win on the internet anymore? You know, besides, you know, you have to enter your human ID or something that the government will make to make sure you're human or something. I don't know. But... Uh, I, 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 I will... I, I will... I'll, I'll try some logic, phallus. Everything I say is a lie. Or it's like I'll say... <laughs> no, you know, I'll use my favorite one. The following statement is false. The previous statement is true. And if, and if the voice on the other end suddenly shuts up, I know it was a bot. It's like... <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't think that... Uh, that what we've seen in movies, I don't think that AI in the future will blow up if we ask them what love is or something. <laughs> what is so, love? I don't know. They're they, they, they capable of, of, uh, of recognizing what a joke is and recognizing if someone says a statement like that. Yeah. In what? fact, they'll be probably better than us at solving puzzles and they'll recognize when a puzzle is unsolvable. Assuming they've been programmed that way. <laughs> That's well, assuming can, something. Can, I mean, how hard would it be to recognize a paradox? You know, it's okay, this contradicts itself. Well, there you go. I mean, well, it's, 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 it's well, no, but everybody. see, you're getting on something that, that once once we can make a computer that can recognize a paradox, we're getting into true AI. Uh, it's like a machine that can do a, a, a minimalistic amount of reasoning. And there are some projects like that right now. We are creating some computers and software could do, but we haven't really gotten that right yet. Uh, but that's the difference at this point, largely, between a computer algorithm and a human. When a, com when a human gets something that would cause us to go, do 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 we just go, error, kick it out, move on. Most of us. <laughs> Some of us have neurological disorders that prevent us from doing that, and we just keep it forever burning in the back burner. Uh, that, but a computer can't do that. It's like it, when it gets to that endless loop, loop or whatever, it will be in that endless loop. <laughs> it's like it's because it, a computer doesn't know. Oh, this is it's. You're talking about the kinds of things where if I make a software error in my programming and I get the computer stuck in an infinite loop, it can take itself out of it. A computer can't do that right now. It's it'll just loop and loop and loop and loop and loop until it's using all its resources and then it can't do anything else. <laughs> so, but I have a question for you. Once we have a computer that can recognize a paradox and it can recognize humor and uh, characters better than us, how are we going to define, you know, how are we going to differentiate, differentiate what's a human and what's a computer when people make bots that have artificial intelligence when some company that wants to make money off spamming millions of people, you know, some company in whatever country that, you know, sends spam emails that says you have money in Nigeria or something. I don't know. But how, how, how are we going to stop that? Because captures won't work. We can't ask them a paradox. So what, what are you going to do? 
you'll just get you'll just have to deal with the spam, man. That's <laughs> like that's, Come on, you can't just say you're gonna deal with this spam. We we there's obviously something we're gonna try to do. If you don't have any idea. Uh, well, I mean, you know, blacklists can obviously get a lot better. Um, uh, it's whitelists also become a lot more... It's Right now, the primary anti-spam stuff is blacklist and, and flagging spam. Uh, when we get to that level, what's going to become your primary spam, lit, spam defense is whitelist. And that the default for most email accounts will be ignore all messages... And when you get a new message, you like when you get a new set of messages, here's how I see email working when we get to that point. You'll get a list. You have emails from the following new recipients. And it's like if you're expecting an email from somebody you haven't added to your whitelist, you'll go, oh, yeah, here's Bob's email. Yeah, I want Bob. Screw everybody else. It's like, and that'll be like, because you will know who you've given your email to. And, and vice versa, you'll swap emails like you swap phone numbers. You know, it's it'll basically be the same way most of us use a caller ID right now. You know, it's like every so often our phone rings. We're like, I have no idea who that is. <laughs> we don't answer it. We we just set it down. That'll be how we treat our how we treat our email inboxes. It's th that type of and we do that now already. We don't realize it. Uh, most of us probably get in any given week upwards of five to ten phone calls that are just junk and we ignore them <laughs> it's like we don't answer them <laughs> and we'll do the same thing with our email inboxes and so forth it's basically it'll the, the filters will adapt to service that <laughs> it'll be an interesting age uh, did you hear this thing uh, this is kind of back on open office and this I mean if, if we don't have much time this, this I, I kind of want this I, I kind of want to get this in because uh, it, it's pretty important. Oracle asked the people that asked the members who went out in a labor office to leave uh, the open off council, and uh, they did. You know, <laughs> you this. Say that again. Have you read this? Uh, Oracle asked uh, the labor office members to leave the open office council. Yeah. I, and I'm sure they did. <laughs> I haven't read it. I hadn't heard about this. But yeah, it's like if they if they said leave because you're trying to maintain the open office principles, I'd leave. <laughs> well, they said they, they, their words were, it's a hostile fork. Uh, <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> That that's fun. It, that, uh, you, anybody think Open Office is gonna live much longer with or with it in Oracle's hands? Anybody? That's like <laughs> I, I'm gonna laugh if they try and do this to VirtualBox or um, MySQL. I'm gonna laugh. <laughs> so. Now they're officially severed. There, there are no longer any ties whatsoever between the two. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it, they haven't. Nothing's been official. I read the IRC logs for this. It was pretty long, but it was interesting. Uh, they're they're scheduling another meeting to talk about this, uh, but there's definitely starting to get some some heat between this. So they might be, you know, fully separated, but. Yeah. That the, uh, uh, because we're a little long on this part, and I don't want to go beyond six parts, which we may already be at this point, depending on how I have to cut this up. Even though we have plenty of other stuff to go into, which I guess we're going to table to next week. However, this is also open source slash Linux related. So see what additional information you can find on this between now and when we do Linux Wednesday night. This that my guess is this is going to be a, a point of to go into on on uh, Wednesday because it's my guess is there'll be some additional developments as this week goes forward on that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so we have any more? Or are we gonna end about here? I, I think we'll end it here just so we don't get way too many parts out of proportion because everybody complains and we have multiple parts and I'm like, oh, sorry to yell at YouTube.
Yell at the big bad Google for putting a time limit on us.